So, number one, let's take a character. You've got everything clear now. You're, uh, you, you're, you're, but you're probably still got a lot of blow by blow, but that's okay. The next step is to ask yourself, what are we doing? What is, what is, what does fiction do that these other forms of art can't do? And try to play to the strengths of what's going on in your fiction. In other words, you can't compete with Jackie Chan for a, a, an engaging blow by blow action sequence. So why try? Why instead not do what fiction does really well? What can we do that they can't do on the screen? Thoughts. Characters, thoughts, and emotions. Particularly if you can make us feel like we're exactly feeling what the character is doing. Now this is why I prefer to use direct thoughts of the character um, in a, uh, with a balance with a third person narrative because I, I think this allows me to do a lot of interesting things. And I try to make the thoughts shows rather than tell. And you can do this. You know, it, having a, you can have a character stop and say, I wonder why those mortars stopped firing. Or you can imply that this is a, a, a really chaotic action sequence by having them roll to the ground you know, cut, you know, things exploding around them and have them think, the mortars, they've stopped. That is a more of a show. And I prefer to do this personally. This is a, this is a stylistic choice. Um, but it is one I suggest that you try out. A lot of the thoughts that I'm seeing um, used by you uh, are very expository, which again is a stylistic choice. I'm not going to say don't do it, but I'm going to say consider trying to make the thoughts more shows to give us, like, you get a feeling of this is the immediate thought they're having at this moment, and then the, the narrative really does the tells that need to be told, and let, let the thoughts be, be shows, indications of emotions as well as thoughts. And you can show emotion with thoughts really easily. It's a powerful way to do so without having to say, he felt this, he felt this, he felt this. Granted, you're going to use some of that. but. Thoughts and emotions of the characters are something that we can do that is very difficult to convey in film in the same way. Are you saying treat thoughts like a quotation? Or rather than say, he thought this, you would just have it in, say, parentheses or whatever and just... Uh, I would put it in italics. Yeah. Underlined I mean, italics. Yeah. yeah. Italics. Right. Yeah. That's and I, I wouldn't even in that one, I mean... sort of get a little tiresome? Mm -hmm. um, if you do it too much, it really does. But it depends on your narrative flow and how often you break it and how often you put these thoughts in. Um, you'll see that I do it. I probably do it like once a page. Um, and once a page is a ticker as a reminder of the character's emotional and uh, mental state. Do you need to add a so-and-so thought at the end of those? or just um, You stuff? don't really need to. We frequently do. Uh, the thought is invisible. Um, in the... The mortars, they've stopped. I wouldn't put a thought there to help just give a little bit of an extra conveyance of the emotional state of the character. They don't have time for complete thoughts, so we don't have time to write down, he thought. Uh, he, he's just noticing it. And you know that's replacing, he noticed that the mortars should stop shelling. And it's saving a few words, which is good, but it's also using it to convey character a little bit more. So we can do thoughts and emotions. What else can we do? Um, we have a little bit more flexibility with um, pacing and... Yes, we do. <clears throat> yes, pacing. Good example, because with our pacing, what we can do is we can zoom through an hour and focus in on a moment in ways that um, in a book, in a film, they kind of have to use like slow-mo and stuff. <laughs> and it's very natural in the rhythm of a book. And so we can manipulate pacing. Uh, it allows us to do this thing where, you know, we give a quick explanation of where he's going and where she's going, and then we can pace it through the main character and, um, and things like that. Okay, what else can we do? We have a hand back here. I was just going to say, the five senses, like we talked about, yeah. you mentioned emotions, but not necessarily the senses. senses. Good. This, is, this should be part of what you're doing for your concreteness, um, but it is a great thing to remember. We are much better with some of the senses. Um, yeah. Our special effects by the Oh yeah, yeah. Special effects unlimited. Great. And um, don't overload your uh, your fight sequences with descriptions. But boy, if you, this is the place to bring out the big guns 
where it comes to writing compact, concrete, descriptive sentences. Um, you know, and I told you to bring the metaphoric language down. That doesn't mean to get rid of it, you get rid of it entirely. Um, but I would try and bring the metaphoric language into character voice a little bit more. Robert Jordan did this. Uh, you, the <coughs> metaphors of a given character, and um, a, a person who is a blacksmith would use forging metaphors. A farmer would use farming metaphors. A soldier would use soldier, soldiering metaphors. Um, and, you know, a metaphor like the, the battleground smelled like the, uh, a forge after a long day's work with smoldering bits of metal and, and things. I mean, you know, something like that can convey character and still be a, a great metaphor for something like this. Just don't get too flowery. But some of these really strong, concrete sentences um, for, for descriptions can, can really shine in a fight sequence. All right. Mark. Backstory? Backstory, sure. Like, uh, yeah. In Princess Bride, that how the characters... The you know Bassini's troop sort of is assembled, and you get to know that Inigo has spent 20 years studying fencing or whatever. That things that they have to tell you when you see the yeah movie. yeah yeah that's um, that that's a good one as well. Um, really, what a lot of these are getting into is your ability to use the thoughts and emotions. Um, considering all of this stuff, if you look at it, your fight sequences should start to shape up a little bit. They should stop being a blow by blow and more be. A, a, an experience of the character's emotional and mental state while they're in serious danger. A trained soldier is probably not going to have as many thoughts or emotions. He's going to have reflexes. Um, and so that, but that's okay. But